Hi folks, my name is Cliff Schroeders and I'm a reader in cybersecurity at Leeds Beckett University and I'm the director of our um, research centre and uh, this video is addressed to prospective students who are considering uh, studying cybersecurity, trying to decide where to, to study and I'm going to tell you about some of the cool stuff that we're doing and things that set us apart and why you should come and study with us. So security is hard to get right it's very easy to end up on this list of companies that have suffered data breaches and security vulnerabilities uh, over the last couple of years. Um, but working in security can be fun. So one of the nice things about working in cybersecurity is that, you know, there's the good guys and the bad guys. And I guess uniquely, in order to be the good guy and do the job effectively, you need to be able to do the bad guy stuff as well. So as a white hat, you learn about all the um, you know techniques that a black hat attacker will use. Uh, you'll learn about you know how to hack into systems, and you can apply that same skill set and mindset, the security mindset, to actually audit the security of systems so that you can check whether they're secure. Uh, but also, it helps you to be able to reason about security. So if you can think about things in the way of how would someone go about breaking this system that's important in order to design um, and secure systems as well. So we really believe in the philosophy of allowing you to get hands on with things because we want you to learn from experiencing and experimenting, getting your hands dirty and you're going to actually have an opportunity to do some hacking and actually you know have safe environments where you can you know do the coding, put the theory into practice and really solidify the learning that you're doing by not just learning about the theory, uh, but then applying the theory that you're learning about um, critically so that you can actually um, you know, really fully understand it and have applicable skills that you can, um, ready to use in industry, um, for example. So we have designed our course with Cyborg in mind, which is the um, cybersecurity body of knowledge. Um, and with a specific emphasis on making sure that you've got applied skills, um, we've got quite a lot of the kind of, you know, we like to do a bit of extra like ethical hacking kind of uh, getting our hands dirty um, with, you know, actually attacking systems and understanding them. But, you know, we'll do things like quite a lot on the Unix, Linux -y side of things and Windows as well. But, you know, really understanding how you secure systems and how you defend against attacks, how you respond to attacks. So when an at someone attacks your organization, you know, we saw that massive list of companies that have had um, security problems. You know, if, they, if those are the companies that are having security issues, we need to plan for when that happens. So, you know, actually the procedures for incident response and investigation to figure out what happened on the system. Um, and we look at things like malware analysis, we do, um, in um, if you're doing the MEng degree, we'll do like exploit development, like really understanding like <clears throat> the nice juicy technical details, like stack smashing buffer overflows. Um, but you know, obviously, we also in the in across all of our security degrees, we look at like uh, or most of them, we look at web security. So um, you know, how do you order a website, and you know, all of these um, topics. Um, and when you're doing that, we um, <clears throat> we like to use a capture the flag approach. This is some pictures of an actual event that we ran um, where based on the technology that we've developed uh, to run like hacking competitions and CTFs, the capture the flag hacking competitions is where you basically solve security challenges and when you've solved them you get this flag um, often it's like a long random string that you can then submit to get points. Um, and so you, you can use those for hacking competitions, but you also use those in a lot or most of our teaching as well. So we have tried to um, incorporate CTF into our various modules so that you'll be completing challenges throughout. And that allows you to basically like put into practice the theory that you're learning, uh, solving challenges, and then you can submit them as marks and that like makes up part of your assessment for a module for example and so we have developed um, a, a whole bunch of open of source uh, of um, 
frameworks and things, some of which we've open sourced that other people are using, making use of as well. But basically, we can randomize hacking challenges, so we can actually create simulations of organizations. So we use this for um, team projects in our, on our degree, so that you're given this uh, organization that has a bunch of like security problems within their, on their various systems and uh, has kind of like a realistic mix of secure and insecure things and you do a security order of that. Um, we, we use these to actually run CTF challenges as I was saying uh, but also we use it as um, for security lab exercises and most of our modules have some um, CTF style security challenges. <clears throat> We've also developed um, Hackerbot, which is uh, this chatbot that some modules make use of, where you'll actually be interacting with this um, adversary, and you talk to this chatbot, and it will actually carry out attacks over the network. And it can actually carry out real attacks, so it's not just simulated, but actually you'll be running it on a system, like a virtual machine, um, where you have like actual software and operating systems running, and you'll talk to this chatbot and then it will actually carry out real attacks and exploits and things over the network to compromise your systems. And you'll either need to like defend against that or um, investigate what Hackerbot did to your systems. And that's gone really well. And the modules that use that have really benefited from that. Um, we've got a data center. So we have a, uh, a whole lot of um, servers that actually run um, in a virtualized um, data center so we can actually run you know thousands of VMs at once um, we can have our students all allocate them them VMs that we generate uh, and actually provision VMs onto that and you can actually access that from home and interact with these VMs and um, you know complete the security challenges but we have a um, a re really really powerful data data center with uh, like a cluster of lots of Lots of servers that um, you know enable you to to complete the tasks from home, which obviously, uh, given current events, um, has been really useful for us uh, recently. <clears throat> so we've developed Hacktivity, um, which is our own unique platform that we use to um, actually enable you to get access to all these things. And it um, basically you log into it and you can. Um, <clears throat> access all your VMs remotely, it can do um, the CTF stuff so you can submit your, your, your flags to it, you can do time, we do time challenges on it for some tests under test conditions and, and all sorts of cool stuff and I'll show you that in a second. So it's a portal that you can use to actually access your VMs um, and it has leaderboards and um, you know, you get automated feedback from tests and tasks and things. So a lot of the time when the CTF style um, so, um, marking, uh, not everything is CTF style. Obviously, you'll also be doing reports and doing you know, in-depth analysis and all the rest of it. Um, but often we have some element of CTFs. Um, and then when you do that, you get those marks like straight away. You know where you are. Uh, it can help you with your comp build your confidence and also get that feedback like, immediately. So you know, um, you know how you're going. Um, so we also uh, currently, one of the ways that we've adapted to the COVID-19 um, pandemic is that we've been making really good use of Discord. So we have a Discord server with um, like um, categories or groups of channels for every um, security module. It's been really good, honestly, like we've got, um, you know, students have just been an excellent online community. Uh, really good at um, supporting each other as you know and we're all in, and staff have been really great about being on there as well and you know it's 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 gone really well so we've run, we've run um, kind of like live um, labs on there and we can use it to share screens and sort of see what everyone's up to and that in combination with activity has meant that even when we've not been it's, when it's not been possible to um, be in the same room it's just worked like really well as a um, um, way for, for us to stay engaged and to um, increase the communications. And in fact, I think students have a wider circle of other students they're communicating with than, than they otherwise would have. Um, so I've just been really happy with how that's um, been going just recent, you know, recently, given the you know, situation. 
So, um, I won't show you Discord because it's, obviously there's a lot of chat with, um, uh, you know, potentially per personal um, chats and things. But what I will show you is I'll, I'll give you a quick demo of Hacktivity uh, and our uh, like lab infrastructure. So let's see if I can just switch to that. Let's see. All right. So, um, so this is Hacktivity. Um, you can see. Uh, that we have a hell of a lot of VMs that we provisioned onto Hacktivity and um, there's just seven users online at the moment um, and you know a lot of CTF challenges that have been solved. If we um, have a look at the Hacktivities that are there you can see we've, we run um, regular capture the flag um, competitions for our students um, sometimes with like prizes and things and other times just for just for fun. Um, and these are some of the modules that are running at the moment. Uh, if we look at uh, this module, Incident Response and Investigation, uh, it's one of the modules that makes use of um, Hackerbot. And we'll just look at the very first lab um, as an example. So you can see here, um, you know, you, there's, there's a leaderboard and you can see, um, you know, a lot of people have completed this challenge, for example. Um, but you know it's quite nice to see if some people really want to be the first person on that list to have completed the challenges um, and in this case it's just for the weekly lab um, and you can see here for this this specific um, lab it tells you like where you are in, in places how many flags you've solved for that specific lab and you progress through the lab in this case there's five um, five flags to submit and you can submit them in here once you've got the flag um, and yeah so these VMs are already running so we can click to interact um, with the VMs um, and so all of these VMs are actually running uh, in our data center I'm not on campus at the moment I'm working from home at the moment uh, but you can see so this is actually realistic um, experience for students and because I'm using the same same infrastructure that students use so if I go full screen with this uh, you know just you know really works really well um, you can see um, how easy it was so basically um, I'm connected to the the VPN uh, in order to access that website and then I've, and I've installed um, the over um, uh, vert, vert viewer locally and then all of this stuff is um, just running over the network using the SPICE protocol. Anyway, to, I'll um, uh, I guess tell you all the technical details if you're interested but basically um, here's an example of Hackerbot and it um, basically asking us to complete some simple tasks. Um, throughout the module Hackerbot will carry out other kinds of um, attacks and it will um, do all sorts of things that you have to write IDS rules to monitor network attacks and things. But in, in this example, it's just asking us to stop. Uh, so it says an attempt to delete this file as a file path is going to stop the attack using file attributes. Um, okay, so it wants to delete the file um, and let me know when you're ready. So in this case, um, you know, there's a few different ways you can stop someone from deleting a file, but um, specifically saying to use file attributes. I guess we can start by having a look at what the file attributes are on that file. So we can do um, you can see that there are, aren't any set that is just to do with the file system that's being used. So if you want to set them, uh, we do ch Atter, which is to, to change the attributes, and if we add i, it will make it the file immutable. So, uh, oops, and we have to do that as um, sudo to um, run the command with um, like root privileges. So, you know, one of the nice things about our environment is we can give you like root access to VMs and things and um, you know give you permissions to do all the kinds of security um, great stuff that you need to be able to do in order to learn about security um, 
And so we tell Hackabut it's ready. Hackabut is actually running in a separate um, VM and it's talking to us via this, this chat. Um, but it will actually connect to our system and attempt to actually delete that file. And if we'd set that incorrectly, it would have just deleted it off the system. And then we need to create a new file um, and do it correctly. Um, and so you see there's that element of realism there. And you can see here um, that Hackabot actually hands us a flag. And so we can um, you know, copy that. And then if we head back over to Hacktivity, we can submit, submit that flag. And in this case, the module's um, finished, so it's not giving us marks, but you can see here that it's, um, you know, we've now completed two flags and um, progress has, has um, increased. And if we were completing this on time, our score would have increased as well. Um, but that just gives you an idea of, you know, so the, the infrastructure that we have. There's a lot of really cool stuff. In some cases, there'll be um, like a lot of VMs involved each week. So, you know, in this module, there's um, like a different set of VMs, um, you know, for each week. Okay, let me just wrap this up by saying that um, there's also uh, a number of um, statistics and things that it can help you to understand your own progress. So for this module, for example, it tells you like how many flags you've submitted and gives you like a, a rundown of um, marks for the module and the kind of progression through the module and where, where you are um, sitting in terms of marks. And so, you know, this infrastructure has been invaluable for us in, especially at the moment, you know, having developed all this um, over the last few years and with the global pandemic that's happening now, it's really empowered us to have just an excellent experience overall, but also, um, you know, COVID has had a minimal impact, I guess, on the way that we teach the security labs um, for um, these modules because we're able to actually do this remotely and support students remotely to, to access this and they can access all that infrastructure um, online uh, and kind of complete the lab work. So it's been really invaluable, but not only because it's really great in terms of our ability to do cool like hacking challenges and security challenges, but also because it supported our students to actually um, still have a great learning experience even in these very difficult circumstances. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.